Hi there. In this video, I'm going to go over some stuff which I think will help all of you with your Java work. So what we have here is a, is a little program in Scratch, right? And you could think of this as being like, um, like the classes that you've been working on in Java, right? So this is a class, and it's a class cat. Right, and um, what the, what this set of programming commands, right? These are just like Java, except that they're blocks instead of the text that you write in Java. Uh, what this program does is, when I click on the cat, it does a goes around in a circle. Okay, so you could think of this as being like the constructor of a Java class, right? It sets some things equal to starting values. And, um, and then it, it calls, or it's, it broadcasts this method turncat, which is kind of like calling another method, telling another method to take control. So control transfers down to this set of blocks, which you could think of as being like a method. And this set of blocks has a loop, which is very similar to the while loop. It says forever if cat direction is less than 360, which is really just like while cat direction is less than 360. Do the commands inside the loop, which are, right, right, those. In Java, we would we use braces to indicate the body of the loop. Um, and inside the commands are turn, turn amount degrees, right? These are variables, obviously. Move 10 steps, change cat direction by 10, right? And that causes the cat to do its circle, all right? Now, one of the reasons that we have to transition to Java from, unfortunately, we have to transition to Java from Scratch, because I really like Scratch, and I think most of you did, is that you, there's some things that Scratch really isn't very good at doing in Java is. So here's one of them. So if I duplicate this guy and move it over here and click on it, right, it does exactly the same thing as the other one did. Now, what if I wanted this scratch to do a, this size, this size circle, and this one to do a much bigger circle? Right? It's the same code, except a few of the variables need to change. Right, but the only way that I can get this one to, to, um, to make a bigger circle is to come in here to manually change this variable. So if I change that to 5 and um, what I really need to do is, is uh, sorry, I have to do this. I need to put turn amount in there. Okay. Good. So if I run this now, it makes a nice big circle, right? But I had to go in and manually make that. Don't worry about that change. That should have been the same. That should be the same in both of these. I just forgot to change that. But this, this program for this cat now has 10 here. And this cat has five, right? And the only way I could do that is by manually going in and changing that for each of these. And you might go, well, that's no big deal. But what if I had hundreds of cats and I wanted them all to have different turn radiuses? I'd have to go into each cat sprite and manually make that change, right, to be what I wanted it to be. What you really need is some way to sort of conceptually split the code for the cat from particular implementations of a cat, right? And that's exactly what Java does. Java, um, you write your class, and then you make instances of your class, and those are kind of like the sprites. But they're separated in that um, e each, you can make changes to the general code for the cat class and each of your cat, each object that you make from that class will pick up that code, will pick up those changes, right? 
Whereas here, each of these really has their own set of code. If I change something in this one, um, so if I change that to three, right, that doesn't change this one, it's still 10. It'll make a nice big circle. Whoa, there he goes, and coming back around, and boom. Okay. So, let's look at this in Java and see how this is similar. So, I have a cat class here, right? Similar to this scratch code, which you could think of as a cat class. I don't have any sprites, though. I don't have any of these guys, this is what I was talking about. Java does a much better job of, of splitting the code from the instantiation of the code. So, let's look at this. Public class cat. I have two fields, or instance variables, very similar to... Whoops, did not mean to do that. Shoot, I have to start that back up. Okay. Um, that are very similar. What I need to do is move that out of the way, not close it. Which are very similar to, right, cat direction and turn amount. These variables in Scratch. And each object that I make of the cat class has its own version of these two variables. Now here's where it gets interesting. I have a constructor here for cat where I can set these variables for each cat object that I make from the cat class. Right? And without changing the code at all, all I'm doing is changing these variable values or the state of the cat. The state of the, this cat, this very simple cat, is just what its cat direction is and what its turn amount is. That's the state of the cat. Now I have my turn cat method, which is very similar to this set of blocks, right? And uh, it has a while loop, and it says while cat direction is less than 360, and since I don't have a sprite in Java, I just, uh, what I'll do is do print statements, right? And here I add, um, actually I shouldn't have 10 here, right? What should I have here? I should have turn them out. Right? So, uh, so, now, if I, what would be the equivalent of this broadcast here? Right? So that, so that this, um, this will be run automatically when I click on the cat. Um, what you've been doing, in fact, is kind of like um, this, right? So this is the constructor. When I click on that, this gets run. Be like when you make a new cat object, the constructor gets run. This code gets run. And then when you click on this, it goes around. And that would be like when the red box, here, let's compile this. We'll make a new cat. We'll give it a direction of uh, zero. And um, this is the turn amount. We'll make that 20. OK. Now, if I call this turn cat method, it just does the textual equivalent of the cat turning, the sprite turning around. It's like, it's very similar to my having to click on this method to... Hmm, why isn't the cat going? Oh, got it right. I have to reset it there. Then I can click on that. There it goes. Sorry. So this this had to reset these variables back to these starting values in order for anything to happen here. Okay. So, but I'm going to pull this off because that's a pain in the neck. And 
do this when I receive things. So then I have to just, I just have to click on the cat and off it goes, right? Because this method basically tells this method, hey, do your stuff, right? Through this sending, the broadcasting of this message. So we can do the same thing in, in Java. And what we can do here is in the constructor, we can say, hey, after you've set cat direction equal to whatever value was passed in for dir, and you've set turn amount equal to whatever amount was passed in, uh, call the method turn. So I can call turn cat like that, right? And that's just like over here, uh, sending this message, broadcasting this message, which is picked up by this set of blocks. Think of this set of blocks as like this method. Okay, cool. So uh, let's compile that. We'll make a new cat. Whoops, make a new cat. We'll give it, see it's called cat1. We'll give it a, um, a direction of zero and a turn amount of 20. Okay, and it, it's, it, it did the textual equivalent of that sprite turning around. <clears throat> okay, now let's make another new cat. We'll call this, this is cat2. We'll set it zero and we'll have a very small turn amount, right? This is the big wide circle. And, and look how many print statements there are, right? To make it turn all the way around. Okay, so I think, I hope this is, this is clear and we could make um, as many cats as we want. And each one of them, let's look at their state. Uh, we'll inspect them. So this cat has a cat direction of 360. That's because it was changed, right, in the loop until it got up to 360. Uh, and its turn amount is 20. This cat, inspect, also is at 360 because that's we ran it and uh, that's what happens. And its turn amount is 3, right? So, the, so we didn't have to change the code for cat to have these two cats having those two different turn amounts. Unlike in Java, sorry, unlike in Scratch, we actually had to go into this cat and change its code to have its turn amount changed. So it's, it's that ability to have more flexibility in Java that, that's to, to separate your code from instances of your code so that your instances can have different values without changing your code. You're just changing the state, the variables. It's hard to do that in Scratch, easy to do that in Java. Okay, I hope this helped.